Standing Up with Craig Shoemaker, and we have a special guest today. My old friend, Mike Sherrard, first-round draft pick of the Cowboys in the 80s, late 80s, Super Bowl winner with the 49ers, and a great guy, very successful business person, very active with the NFL and their alumni, and he is our special guest. <clears throat> Mike, something you didn't know about making this trek all the five minutes away from your home, you didn't realize <laughs> that sacrifice, you get rewarded for that. It was a voyage. I know you're a workout guy. You're still in good shape. You gained a few pounds since uh, you're 165. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> 165, <laughs> back when you were a freshman, a walk-on. This is Before You Train, Before You Train by Viotech. And I have to tell you, I don't really notice the difference. I just think the vitamins make my pee yellow. Okay. This works. This will make a difference? Exactly. Nice. Then, yeah, Thank before you. Before you game. Before you game is also if before you train with before you game and these are peak performance. This is pre workout. And this is a, a max mental performance. We have to have good mental performance. You should have taken this before you came on here today. I know I did. No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. So you get those as our special gift. Viotech.com. That's V Y Viotech USA. Do not listen to the first thing I said. Okay, <laughs> Viotech USA. Check it out. Really incredible supplements. Get some. We ha Oh, we have a coupon code. What's our coupon code? Is that what you call it, a coupon code? It's a code that you can use based on my name. Put SHOE, S-H-O-E, in there. And you could do sh put SHOE. A lot of people call me SHOE. It's my nickname. I'm here with SHOE and SHOE. <laughs> put SHOE or SHOE in the coupon code, and you'll get a discount, okay? Check out these nutritional supplements. You're going to love them. Mike Sherrard would have sat next to you in homeroom. <laughs> <laughs> alphabetically, that's how it goes. Not only alphabetically, not only S, it's SH. We would have been right next to one the another whole time. if we grew up in the, the same whole, area. But yep. you grew up in Northern California. A little tougher up there than it is here, but also a little comparable to Philadelphia, wouldn't you say? Like a little bit. It's the California version of Philly. Is Oakland? Oh, that, that, that's, that's, I don't know. Oakland is, yes. Oh, you're not Oakland. <clears throat> yeah. I grew I born in Oakland. Yeah. Chico is. It was like oh, Orange no. County. Like it's it's not like Oakland. Chico's Orange County. No, Look in terms you. of like, in yeah. terms of like toughness, toughness, right? And, yeah. You know, getting beat up and robbed and that sort of Didn't thing. Didn't happen. No, not in Chico. Really? Yeah. Wow. It was a good place to grow up. Uh, yeah, Philly was a good place to grow up in a different way, though. You learned something from wherever you are, I guess. Mm -hmm. Now, how did the Chico background help you in professional sports? You know, you became a first round pick of the. Dallas Cowboys, and then you went on to play 10 seasons. How did Chico, how was that a great? I don't know if it helped. It, it, it did not help. It, it made my course different, my path different to get to UCLA and to the pros. But Chico, no one goes to Chico to recruit. Even Aaron Rodgers, who grew up in Chico, no. he didn't get recruited out of high school. He had to go to junior college. Oh, wow. And the only reason he got discovered, Cal Berkeley went up to see a tight end. So people don't go to Chico. To, he becomes one of the greatest players in history. For sure. And it might not have happened if there wasn't a good tight end. Correct. I did not know that. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But that's Chico. It's just so far up the beaten path. And if people are coming to California to recruit, they're going to L.A. first, second, and third. Right. Maybe the Bay Area, maybe Sacramento. But they're not coming all the way to Chico. Well, they'd be smart to do that because that's off the beaten track. Because since everyone is going to be in competition for the athletes that are in L.A. where they want to hang out and go to the bars in Hollywood and stuff, right. so it's smart. I would be if I was recruiting and I wanted to get a little bonus, I would go to Chico <laughs> and say, "Look, Aaron Rodgers came out of there, and Mike Sherrard, I want you to know." Right. For, and so you and you actually were not heavily recruited. You went to UCLA. Was it a walk on? Walk on. So they knew nothing about me. That wow. was the only school I applied. for. To, got accepted on my own. Didn't want to go. I wanted to go to the junior college that Aaron Rodgers went to. No way. To earn a scholarship. Which was that called? Butte College. So you wanted to go there as well. Yeah. Do you that, know? Do you know Aaron Rodgers personally? Do you know him? Uh, you I met, met him? him when Since I you had a similar path. You might have shared that with. When him. I went into the Chico Sports Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aaron was there. He got some Butte College award that same night. And so no. he came up and introduced himself to me. He did? And he said, hey, I'm Aaron Rodgers. I just graduated Butte. I'm going to go to Cal. I said, take it easy on UCLA. And oh, that, this is back then. Back then, yeah. Oh, before. Then. Oh, you, I've not seen him since. Oh, you haven't met him since he was a pro. Correct. Oh, you'd think he would be hanging out with you, you know, well, the fellow Butte people. <laughs> <laughs> 
That, oh, but you didn't end up going there. You went to UCLA. And then what happens on the first day when you show up and you're not recruited? And we all know how that goes because mm -hmm. you're, you're like cleaning up towels at that point, right. right? What happens? Like, how do you do? You show them film or do you say, give me a tryout? What do you say? How do you get on that team? Well, it was interesting. So I graduated high school in June of 81. Uh -huh. I go to summer school at UCLA uh, two weeks later. So I'm in summer school. And so I saw the football guys practicing, like the, the quarterbacks, receivers, DBs, they throw all summer. Who were they? Anybody Anybody end up famous? Like uh, people that you're watching? Who was the quarterback then? Uh, Tom Ramsey. Oh, okay. Was there. Yeah. And the receivers, JoJo Townsell, who made it in the pros. Sure. Um, Doki Williams, who made it in the pros. But I saw them working out. So I met a football player just on campus. And so I told him, hey, I want to put, try football. I'll take you out there. So I meet the offensive coordinator, Homer Smith. and he just says, I'm going to introduce you. You to said, a coach. You said, did Great. you do anything to that guy? Like say, hey, watch me run. No. Nope. <laughs> he just trusted you. Just trusted me. And you had, did you give any stats of you in high school? Nope. You nope. didn't say, hey, I was really good in high school. Nope. You were good in high school, right? Yeah, I was good in high school for Chico. For Chico. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't throw the ball either. So, so. Oh, right. So right. this guy, his name is Mike Durden. He takes him on the field. Homer, this is Mike Sherrard. He wants to try out for the team. And so Homer Smith says, are you a student? Yeah, I'm a student. He goes, yeah. He goes, well, we throw every day at 3.30. Yeah. You know, I was taking summer school in the morning. So I came out and just started working off the guys. And yeah. then they probably saw a little something in me. It wasn't polished by any stretch. Yeah. I was 6'2", probably weighed 165, Oof. 160. Man. I was a skinny kid. And then I just kind of got better and better. But it was not an easy road, for sure. Right. So you kept getting better and better. And then how do you end up on a team? I mean, how does that work? Do they say... Is it like Rudy where they come in? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Almost. Well, the thing about it is back then, as a walk-on, you're on the D1 squad, yeah. you're a tackling dummy. Right. So yeah. who cares if I, I'm a tackling dummy and get hurt, bring on the next tackling dummy. If he gets hurt, bring on the next one, so forth and so on. And so I don't think they cared that much. And I didn't know how the process worked. I'm like, I just met the coach and he said I can try out and he saw me all summer and then saw him maybe I wasn't great at the beginning by any stretch. Yeah. But he just saw I was there and consistent and and, and, and then he says, Hey, you're on the team. He never really said that. Well, just, how, how does that happen where suddenly you're have a uniform on and you're even if you're being tackled as a dummy? Right. Well, before that, so all summer I'm working up the guys. Working out. Then they're like. In pads or no pads? No, just no pads. Just no pads. Shorts just working and, out. Yeah. Just run out for passes. That's it. And then at some point they're like, okay, well, next week we start. Freshmen come for a week. Then the, the vets will come after that. So I'm like, okay, I guess, I guess I'm on the team. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know. So your name's not like up on a list on a bulletin board. I remember when I was a kid, yep. that was, that was it. You got cut or you didn't. Right. I made a team one time and, uh. I said, there's no way I'm going to make this basketball team. There's no way. I, because I remember in tryouts, a guy threw the ball to me and hit me in the face. I mean, and he's there. He, he was thrown so hard. And right. it just hit me. I'm going to go, there's no way. And so I went out for wrestling, and I'm already wrestling. And I look, and they said, where were you for practice? I made the team. <laughs> so I, my wrestling career consisted of uh, the guy would ask me how many lights were on the ceiling were burnt out. That's how many times I got pinned. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> I was that guy. So, so you, so you go, you get on this team and it just keeps getting better and better. You gain a little more weight, you yep. gain a little more experience. Yep. And what was the first time that they said, you're actually not a tackling dummy? Did you, was there a speech? They pull you aside. I mean, how does that work? Well, if we back up a little bit, when I was actually a tackling dummy, I remember going through a drill one time where all the linebackers were lined up, all the yeah. walk-ons were lined up and we're supposed to run from point A to point B. <laughs> yeah. And they said, the linebackers are going to tackle you in the middle. I'm like, okay, can I outrun them? They're like, no. <laughs> can I juke them out? They're like, no, Mike, just jog. <laughs> These 240-pound dudes are going to take you to the ground. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be fun. And so I remember doing that drill. I'll never forget. I did the drill. I'm like, the drill sucked. Obviously, it <laughs> yeah, sucked. Yeah, that sucked. But when practice ended, I'm like, I'll never do that again. Like, I'm going to find out a way to be on the other field where the regular offensive guys are playing. Yeah. So I used to just wear my coach out, like, Coach, how can I get better? What can I do? Wow. So I used to work my butt off at practice, and so the, the defense didn't really like me too much because I, I'm every day is like Super Bowl to me. Like, I'm making catches. I'm making oh, you look like bad. they're like you're showing them up. <clears throat> so yeah. they're like, 
you're all Spalding Field because you're you're going too hard. I'm like, hey, I don't care. I I hear this all the time when you hear about the the overachievers that go the extra mile. I mean, Rudy was about that too. Yep. It was like, hey, slow down, kid. Yep. And he ended up, you know, beating out one of the guys, you know, who was, you know, a spoiled guy who was had this natural talent and stuff like that. I guess that's how some coaches weed these players out too, is the players that do have that attitude. Yep. Like they yep. should all be at that speed at all times. It's For like sure. It's a super Bowl. And it makes everyone better. So at some point I was getting better. I would still be involved with one-on-ones. So receiver versus DB. And so at some point my coach told me in the hindsight that he told one of the uh, graduate assistant coaches, make a film of the best one-on-ones we've had all year. And so the coach saw it. He goes, why did you make the Mike Schwartz highlight film? I told you to make the best one-on-ones. He wow. goes, he goes, I didn't know who any of the dudes were. These were the best one-on-ones. They were, it didn't also. matter the number. It's like, this is the best. Right, this is the best. So then the Ended coach- Ended up being you a lot. Right. And so the coach like, okay, he must be pretty good. And the, the, that same coach, we would do like scout team. He'd always say, you'd hold up a card and you run this, you run that. And he'd always say, Mike, you run this because this guy's going to get the ball. I know you're going to make a play. You're going to make our defense look bad. You're going to get them prepped for the game on, on Saturday. Wow. So you were like getting them really ready. Were they good that year? Yeah, yeah we were good. We're really? Good. Yep. You mean the year that you were – do you dress for the games? No. So oh, I, you didn't dress for the no, games? No, 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 because I was registering the first year. Oh, okay. That's a big deal, too, dressing for a game. Well, you had a choice. I could have dressed for the game, but I knew I wasn't going to play. So I'm like, yeah. I didn't want to dress. So, really? Yeah. Oh, well, I would have done it anyway. Yeah. So for, the, the, for the girls, <laughs> keep your helmet off. <laughs> so the first year, if we we have a field goal blocked against SC, if we the field goal doesn't get blocked, we go to the Rose Bowl. Wow. So we had a good team. But we got blocked. We lose the game. We go to the Blue Bonnet Bowl in Houston, Texas on New Year's Eve. Yeah. And you were there, you flew there, yeah. you got to go with the team, you just didn't dress. Correct. But that's the first time they let me practice with the regular team. Because instead oh. of I'm going to the scout team, like, Mike, now you sure. come practice with us. You know, you're not going to wow. play. Yeah. We want you taking reps with the team. I was like, oh, okay. How sore are you that every after every practice? Is it really like an ice situation? or well, I, Just at the beginning. Like the first yeah. couple of weeks, pros is way worse. It oh, be, is that right? It used to be way worse, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, aren't there rules now? That... You can't hit. You can't, you can't even sweat and practice in the pros. <laughs> wow. <laughs> or the team gets fined. That's one of those things. I'm, I'm in the wrong era. For sure. You know, I and, think that in comedy even, it, comedy is so, uh, you don't even need an act anymore. Right. I, was, I, was, I grew up at a time you actually you had to really perform an act, you had mm -hmm. to write it out, you had to re really hone it and craft it, right. do it all the time. Now they're going, they go up and they read a grocery list. Right. I was born in the wrong era. Right. <laughs> or they make it from a two second TikTok. Right. You know, right. it's so, it, it, so sometimes I'm sure you're this way too. It's like, man, I wish I had it like that. You know, I would, you probably would have lasted longer, well, right? Well, the whole defenseless receiver, that wasn't a phrase when I was playing. You could hit the receiver <laughs> anytime. We're getting our heads knocked off. You had to be a different or demented person to go across the middle. So that's what you had to do. Yeah. Nowadays, you can go across the middle because you know you're not going to get hit. Jeez, man. And just having that, knowing that, just gives you so much more confidence and for courage. For sure. You know, knowing you're, but you, but you played in a time where they are absolutely head hunting. Just trying to knock your head off every time. And it's legal. And like, literally, was, literally the head. Yes, for sure. Did you get concussions? I think I got one concussion, but I kept playing throughout the game. Yeah. But that was about it. I was pretty, pretty fortunate. Yeah. But I mean, what it, <laughs> let's go back to the old school thing. You know, you and I are old school. <laughs> They used to just say your bell was rung. For sure. That's They didn't say concussion. They'd give you smelling salts. They smell, smelling smell salts. About remember, how many fingers am I holding up? I remember the smelling salts. Yep. It was like ammonia. They, you would crack them and yep, put exactly. them in front of the stuff. And it would wake up a cadaver. Right. Would, it'd be dead. And you're oh, I'm, I'm okay. Right. And you go right back into the game after the smelling salts. For sure. So... <laughs> <laughs> what is going on now? Why are there so many concussions? Well, are no, they really having them, or, or the, they, they, the, are we in denial of our concussions? The league is doing a, a lot better job. So there's concussion protocol. They take course, guys out. Yeah, right. So it's a lot better now. So they're, it's a violent game. End of the day, it's a violent game. So yeah. they're taking out as many concussions as possible yeah. for a game that's super violent. What I'm asking, though, is 
were there as many concussions now as there were then? Obviously, you didn't deal with them. There wasn't called that. Like it was called bell rung or whatever it was. Get in there. They say you're a wuss if you don't get back in there, right? Well, and also the teams wouldn't tell you if you had a concussion. That's what I mean. So, I mean no, in, in terms of they would write down concussion and not tell you. Yeah, yeah. So before, like sometimes they would, my or, generation would not, they would say, you're okay, your bell's wrong, go out there and not report it. Right. But there's other times later in my career, teams would write down, you have a concussion, but not tell you as the player. Mm -hmm. So you'd go back out there. Because I, <laughs> I have a friend, I'm not going to name the team. So a friend of mine went through the concussion protocol, went to the team he used to play for, and said, you know, he knew he had three concussions, or two concussions. He looked at his medical report, he had six concussions. Mm. They didn't tell him about four of them. Wow. Then I went to that same team and said, I need my medical records just to kind of see what's going on. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, you know, Mike, there's a major flood in this area. All the medical reports are gone. We can't give them to you because they're gone. It's like a Stop major it. flood. I didn't play for <laughs> Yeah, I didn't play in New Orleans. Like, I don't know what the deal and, is. And there's only one piece of paper. I mean, right. <laughs> that, that's it. There's no computers. Right. Oh, yeah. You no. played. Wow, that's insane. Oh, there's so much cover up going for on. For sure. In, in, any, in any corporation, yep. it's just so much. And especially at the NFL. In this case, well, my question, I want to go back to the question, though, is did were there, it seems like there'd be more concussions back then than there are now. But now there seems like there's way more concussions. Well, so I think they were just in denial of them. I mean, did your generation have as many or more concussions and they were just not called a concussion? Yes. And it was more violent back then. That's what I mean. So, there had to be more. Yes, there should have been more. Right. But they weren't diagnosed. They weren't diagnosed. And then also these days, if something is a little bit wrong with you, they're, they're calling it a concussion. Yeah, they, they like exaggerate. It might not even be a concussion. For sure. It might just be dumb. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> you wrung the dumb out of right. them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I know, I know some players. You're active with the NFL, with mm -hmm. the Alumni Association, Correct. right? And Correct. what do you do when, with that, with the Alumni Association? Do you, do, do you go to them if a lot of them have you know, PTSD, they've got brain injuries and all sorts of things? The, I will say the NFL does a good job of helping retired players with if you have, you know, mental things going on or, you know, repercussions of percussions going on, uh, they'll help guys out. With the NFL Alumni Association, I'm the treasurer of the Southern California branch, of 750 members. So what we do just, you know, we'll have, I'll notify people, hey, there's a free health screening or there's a way to make money or we have a golf tournament. So I kind of help guys out with things they need. Yeah. But the health screenings and things and the benefits they can possibly get, but that maybe don't know about, I can help them with that. You must have had a nice pension at ten years of in the NFL, right? Or it's, it's no, it's it's not it's like not, it's not that nice. <laughs> it's not like other sports. It's not like other. No sports. way. Baseball. You would think it'd be the most. Baseball, basketball is a lot better. No. Ten times better. NFL. It's such a short career. You would think they would take that into account. Nope. And ten years in the NFL, I would imagine you would do really well with nope. a pension and they're saying no we're not going to and they're not looking to improve that uh, and if they do improve that will that affect you and your players of your era yeah it won't affect me or players of my era i think it is improving a bit for the people that are playing because i think people get lost when they hear that oj simpson is making 25 grand in his pension no way that's a football pension that might be part of his acting or maybe invested money and he put it into a pension fund i don't know <clears throat> but it's definitely not an nfl pension really guarantee that well, he played a long time, too. He played probably 10 years. Yeah, 9 or 10 years, I think. Yeah. Well, so you're telling me that so they have this pension set up, and they have the worst one, even though they're the number one pro league in the world. Correct. Right? Correct. Probably even over soccer, I would imagine, right? NFL is, I yeah. mean, they're even going to Europe where soccer is king. Yeah, you know, yeah it's, we're trying to take over. It's amazing to me. You know, it's funny. My son now works for the NFL, and he he deals with players, with former players. Okay, and talks to them and their families and things like that. And I, you know, I I guess some families are maybe even resentful of, of you know you saw the movie uh, Concussion, right? And there's some families that are resentful about not being taken care of. But I guess Roger Goodell's kind of stepping that up now. It's like they've kind of learned their lesson. Is that what you're seeing? No, no, no they no, have No, come on. <laughs> Come on, that's, uh, is this a joke? <laughs> I know I'm a comedian. Because uh, you heard about the, the race norming they did with the concussions. So what they had, this concussion uh, 
race norming. Yeah. So they had a ra- they had a concussion settlement. We put down $2 billion for players to apply. And you take a, a cognitive test. And if you qualify, you get X amount. If you're a certain age, blah, blah, blah. Right. So after years of doing it, I knew maybe one or two people that got paid. And then they came out that wow. they graded black players on a different standard than white players. No, I never heard this. Oh, they don't this want- is the first here on it, Still it, Standing Up with Craig it, Shoemaker. It, it, I am not, this has not made the, if it made the news, it was very hush hush. It made the news, it's hush hush. And because then, it's the NFL, they know how to hush hush. Right. It. But then it got out, and then NFL's like, okay, we'll, we'll readjust it now. Instead of saying, we'll go back, but they knew they were doing wrong in the beginning. They knew wow. it. But they don't How want people to How in the know. hell? In this day and age, that's the thing. You can see it happen in the 50s and the 60s, right? <laughs> when there's Jim Crow laws right. and stuff like that. Right. And, you know, colored water fountain or whatever they call right. them. But now, yeah. now yeah. when the NFL is mostly black to begin with, For sure. I mean, yeah. that's amazing to me. So these people at the top, white people, obviously. Yep. How can they walk into a room and go, you know what? we got to make this test different for the blacks. <laughs> they did it. And they got caught. They're like, okay, now we'll adjust it to us normal. Oh, wow. That is nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. I know Jim McMahon is a friend uh, of many years, and I know he was dropped on his head so many times. For sure. I mean, and now they are protecting the quarterbacks. Yeah, and that's a good thing. That's a a little too much, though. A little too much. Maybe a little bit. But you want to see the best guys out there. I know, but, you know, I just... Sometimes it's like, oh, come on. You really needed to call that. You know that he was not getting hurt on that. Right. When it's an accidental push at the end, you know what I mean? But it just drives me nuts. It's like anything, though. It's always something has to find balance. Yeah. You, know, you make some wrongs and some rights and it has to find its own balance. And I guess that's the same with the rules. They change them all the time. I remember there was a, a like a couple years where it was ridiculous the, the how many penalties there were. Right. On And then, they'll, then they switched it up a little bit. But uh, back when you were playing, they could also hold you as a wide receiver. Yeah, they can kind of bump you down the field, um, but also they could hit you m- more <laughs> violently, I would say, right. at different times. If you watch a game now, if someone gets hit violently, there, it's going to be a penalty. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a penalty. Back- now, they'll be throwing them out of the game, too. For sure. They have, the, they have those penalties now. Yep. Now, our, our show is called Still Standing Up. I want to move into that. And speaking of, speaking of standing up, you had a hard time standing up on a couple <laughs> injuries, right? There weren't the injuries in your legs. Yeah, so I had a a bunch of injuries, lower leg injuries. Um, I think the worst of my first year went well. Second year in training camp, I had a compound fracture in my lower leg. A so, compound fracture? Did someone do that to you? Uh, my client. It wasn't that violent of a collision. No. Someone hit my leg. My legs hit, and do you remember who it was and how it happened? I have no it, idea. It was it, it was an excruciating pain, or was it? I think my body shut down because it didn't hurt that much. Oh. Because you figure if I kick you in the shin, Craig, you're gonna it's, it's going to hurt. Right. My bone came through my skin. Oh. It didn't hurt that much. That's a compound fracture. Right. But I think my body, you know, your body shuts down. And which part of your body came through the skin? The My right shin. The tib, fib. Tibula. Oh, that tibia, fibula. Part of it has to do with you being skinny, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> you said you're 165. That was my freshman year in college. Uh, all right, so you got a little bigger, yep. but the tibia comes through the skin. Correct. You're looking at this. That's that's yep. you I, went into shock. I there. felt it and I looked at it, and you went into shock. That's 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 why it didn't really hurt that much. I mean, it was like it was just weird. I don't know about you. If I have an injury like that, I vomit or I get nauseous. Okay. Did you not get nauseous? No. So they, did they cart you off? They had, luckily, they had an ambulance there because we were practicing. It was in Thousand Oaks. It was oh. at Kowloon. We were practicing against the Chargers. And so I'm, the funny thing is I remember when I walked on the field that day, I'm like, huh, I walked wherever the ambulance. like, there's an ambulance here. If someone gets hurt, there's an ambulance here. <laughs> <laughs> and neither to say it was me. We, we talked earlier about the law of attraction. For sure. That was like law of attraction. It you was. attracted that. I did. And so the ambulance took me to the Los Robles Hospital. Mm. And the cowboy doctor isn't and I had to have an operation right right at that time. He wasn't licensed in California to operate. So just the emergency room dude at Los Robles operated my you leg. Don't want a cowboy doctor working on you anyway. We got, we got, <laughs> we got some to repair that there. <laughs> Drink some of this little potion I got elixir. We got some elixir there for you. So speaking of law of attraction, you've used this in your life in a positive way, not like, hey, I'm gonna <laughs> Break, break a bone today through my skin. 
And by the way, folks, he ended up winning a Super Bowl and playing 10 years in the NFL for the Giants and Broncos and 49ers, who you won with, and the Cowboys, who drafted you in the first round. Right. After a walk-on, 165 pounds, that's pretty good. Right. One thing that I would note, though, not though, but your parents talk about genes. Yep. I mean, your mom won a gold medal, I think, in 66 or 67. 67 or in the Pan Am Games, but she was... I was born the sprinter. to date myself. I was born in 63. Mm-hmm. She ran in the 64 Olympics. So you're a year old, so you don't even remember it. Don't remember, but I'm saying for her to and she was, plop me out in June. And give birth. And then well, year, give birth at any time. You know, right. A year later, two years later, whatever yeah. it is, giving birth is a major deal. Right. And she still stayed a top, yeah. high-level athlete. To make the Olympics the next year. And your dad, they meet doing athletics because he's a big athlete. Yeah, so they both went to, for some reason, they both were kind of raised in the Bay Area. For some reason, they both ended up at Chico State. Oh, and talking to my you... parents, there was like eight black kids at Chico State. So they kind of that group kind of hung together. They met and got married, and wow, and stayed married to the end. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So you have got this athletic ability, obviously, but the law of attraction you used it in your life in other ways, right? And it, and people that don't know what that is. Why don't you explain what you believe the law of attraction is? So it's almost like what you put out there. Yeah. You'll get if you yeah. believe in it. Right. If you really focus in on mm-hmm. positive things, yeah. positive things will happen. You focus on negative things, you know, bad things will happen. Like that, an ambulance? For sure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Glad you switched that one around. For sure. How was it used in a positive way in your life? So one point in my single dating days, mm-hmm. I had a good friend, and she's like, Mike, you know, you dating? I said, no, I'm not, I can't find the right woman to date. Yeah. And she's like, you're always, you let women pick you. You don't pick women that you want. Like, huh, that's a that's an interesting thing. Mm. So then it the next day I said, you know what? This is what I want. This is gonna sound shallow, but this is what I want. I'm prefacing the, the statement. <laughs> I said, I was living in New York. I'm like, I want a tall model, a foreigner that speaks English and she's really nice. Oh, the nice part's good. Yeah. So the model part's good too because you're being specific. This is yeah, the type I want a of tall model. You know, I'm I'm, I'm I'm on dating apps now and I'm looking through this. I'm I'm tired of people going, You're shallow with about the right. looks. I don't care. You're not me and I'm not you. You have a certain taste that you right. like. And I look at some of them and go, Could I look at her for the rest of my life? Right. That's what I said to myself. I say yeah. that to myself. Even if they get old, can I look at her for yeah. the rest of my life? And that's the first visual that pops up. And it's usually swipe right as I can't. Well, no, you have to be happy. I agree 100%. You have to be happy with it. Who cares what your friends think? Exactly. You I live my whole life for other people. Right, like, no. Oh, you're a sexist. You're a misogynist. You're anti-women and all this kind of but, stuff. It's like That's people that, you know, they're probably angry because people aren't asking them out or whatever it is. Right. I mean, it, people get upset about that. Yeah, we all have our standards and our tastes. For sure. And what we want to call forth in the universe. For sure. I'm not like a carist if I just got a Porsche recently. Right. I'm not a carist against Teslas or right. some other car, right? Yep. I wanted a Porsche. I put it out to the universe. I said, I'm going to have a Porsche, and I do. Right. Now, it's not like a woman. If there's no <laughs> choice in the matter. A Porsche had no choice. Right. It's mine, okay? But you... The next day? Not the next I... day, but oh, okay. soon after that. I can't remember if it was a week or two weeks. Yeah. I meet this woman uh, who ended up eventually being my wife. Yeah. I saw her at a nightclub, and she was the most beautiful one I've ever seen. Wow. And she was almost six foot. Did you approach her? Well, I was with a guy. I'm like, who is that? And he goes, I know her. I'm like, oh, my, you got to introduce me. No. So he introduced me, and then like, she's almost six foot, Australian. She's a model, was on Vogue, Cosmo. Right and super nice. And did you did you tell uh, him to say uh, tell her I'm a I'm a no no I'm a football player. No no we just started talking and she was super nice. No you didn't leave with my my friends call no. it the comma rap. You I have to say they I to tell them I'm a comedian. No, <laughs> no. I, I although that doesn't work anymore. I don't leave with it. My friends think that helps me out. And it might, I don't lead with it. I don't even, I try not to say So you it. didn't lead with that. Nope. And then you end up with three children together. Three kids together, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah so it manifested. That's it did the manifest. law of attraction yep. can, does work. Not can, it does work. But it takes concentration. It takes focus. It takes commitment. For sure. To that and not listening to people that try to take you down or try yep. to take you a different direction, whatever they're projecting onto you. So if, if anyone's going to listen to this podcast and learn from it in the turnaround of life, that's the first thing you can do is actually proclaim 
what it is. I said to someone the other day, I was actually on a date, and I said something about, what do you want? <clears throat> she was, I think I want, I go, if you think you want it, it's not going to happen. Right. You proclaim it, claim it, and watch what happens. And have, I can't tell you the amount of experiences I have, you know, and you do as well. You know, we're both successful guys, and mm -hmm. we come from, you know, who would have guessed that? Right. I don't know your case, but, and it happened from, I'm not going to, I am going to say, that is going to happen. Right. Like just, just the last night's a great example. Just to tell people a little insight. Mike's an old friend of mine. And we're both creative and we love being creative, but a lot of Hollywood isn't. And we got, I don't want to use the rejected, but our brilliant ideas. You've had one that I've loved for yep. years and we make sizzle reels and pilots and things like that. And because it doesn't happen, doesn't mean it's not great. For sure. It doesn't mean we're not really, really creative and smart. It just means it's a timing thing in life. And it also means, you know, we also have to commit to it. So last night, this guy says, yeah, I'm looking for a true crime sports, you know, he's with a big yep. company. And I go, and I made a couple calls and then boom, ended up talking to you about, talk about a turnaround. You played with a guy that has a pretty high crime and then he increased his crime while he was in prison. <laughs> True, true. To the point where John Gotti's laughing at him. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So we're talking about Daryl Henley. He was yeah. Daryl's a great guy. Um, played at UCLA together, played against him in the pros. Uh he played for the Rams. Yeah. And even like Niners would play the Rams. He was a great defensive player. Yeah, back. he was a starter in the league. So we'd right. go to dinner together. We played, you know, he's a friend, good guy. Yeah. And then got caught up doing some bad things. Did and, you see him getting caught up in these things? And like, did you ever pull him aside and go, that's a bad path? The only thing <laughs> <laughs> I saw him do before the the bad crimes, one of my teammates. Which was drug trafficking. Drug trafficking. Right. Which is a bad thing. Yeah. But one of my teammates in the Niners, this is back, you know, say late 80s. He's like, these are these, remember the chip phones? Hopefully you didn't have one. Chip phones were like back in the 80s, uh, cell phones were like, you got billed by the minute. Someone would say, can I borrow your phone? Like, well, who, where, where are you calling? And how long have you been on the phone? Yeah. You know, it's going to ch charge me extra. So anyway, so people I know, no, not athletes, would buy these chip phones where you could call for free. It was illegal, whatever. So got in the 40 and I said, man, I bought a chip yeah. phone from your, from your dude. And I'm like, First of all, why are you buying a chip phone? Like, and who's my dude? <laughs> and he said, Daryl goes, Daryl Henley sent me, sold me a chip phone. I'm like, why is he selling illegal phones? Yeah. You guys are both in the league. You both are getting uh, compensated very well. Right. So yeah. that was like, the, I'm like, well, hmm, that was interesting. That was it's the first not time. enough. Not enough. Not enough for some people. For sure. Some things are just not enough. And I guess that's what drives them. What kind of background did he come from? A great background. He came from a great background. I mean, he was a great I... student, graduated UCLA. His brother graduated Stanford. Another <laughs> brother graduated Rice. Both his parents went to school. So, uh, you know, I don't condone. So, so you can't you can't use the came from the streets no, and didn't know any no. better. And, and, I, and I don't condone crime at all. Right. But if you're broke and have nothing going on and you take a chance doing something right. illegal, then right. I can understand yeah, a little bit. Especially a chip phone. That's not a big victim. Not, not thing, a, but you know, I'm saying, I'm talking about right. outside of that. And then he got into drug trafficking. Yep. But to top it all off, he's in jail, in prison with yep. John Gotti. Right. The mobster. Right. The mob boss. Right. And he, Gotti finds out that his next crime was he <laughs> threatened, he tried to have the, the judge, a federal judge, and his girlfriend killed. Correct. From jail. Didn't he do it through a, a guard or something? Yeah, he got a, the reports are, he got a cell phone from a guard. And yeah. so he wanted to create some, you know, talk to a, a, a killer, I guess. He would have been out years ago if he didn't do this. Yeah. He got sent to 20 years. In, in state jail, you really spend half of that. He would have yeah. got it in 10 years. Right. But when he threatened to kill the judge, he got an extra oh. 20 years and oh, ended up wow. 40 years. But God, the Gotti story is... They're at, in some jail in Colorado, yeah. and God, he's like, Henley, Henley, you're trying to kill a federal job. You got some balls on you. <laughs> That's great. When John Gotti heckles you, right, right. you know you're a dumb criminal. For sure. And now he's out. and uh, Yeah, he's you, out, and I wish him the best. I mean, have you talked to him about his reform? I mean, he's. Uh, and, we didn't talk about that. Uh, I would say so. I mean, that's 30 years is a long time to think about yeah, what you've done wrong. Yeah, and right. He had a daughter that, uh, that was born right before he went into jail. Oh, and wow. just missing that much of your life, Jeez. the prime years of your life, is, is rough. And, again, 
he made decisions on his own. Right, of course. Yeah. But um, you know, I, I wish him the best, and if yeah. I can help him, I'll do what I can to help him. Which is very, I mean, it's it's awesome. I'm I'm the same way as, you know, you're not going to save someone, which I do a little bit too much of that too. But you just want to extend your hand and offer things to be of service to others. For sure. And I think that's another part of the turnaround of life is when you don't make it about you, you end up benefiting in the end anyway. Mm -hmm. When someone else benefits from you being of service to them. Right. I actually, I've never told you this, before I go on stage, I pray okay. to be of service to someone out there. Hmm. And they might need to be uplifted. I know one woman, I became friends with her. Her mom died hours before she still showed up at the show. Oh, wow. Two hours before she said, what am I going to do? Right. You know what I mean? I, I can't be with her. She's, you know, I took her, took her away and she showed up and it was great for her. Oh, well, I bet. It was I really bet. great. It was exactly what she needed. And in those cases, that's when you and I go, okay, that was the right move to make. Mm -hmm. Get out of myself, go help someone else. And now you're about to help him. And hopefully we can together. We can't talk about it right now, but uh, might have something happen. But you've had a lot of turnarounds in your life and parts of your life where you had to go, this isn't normal. Like your son, <coughs> your right. son, it's it's now you, for the rest of your life, it will not be quote and quote normal. True. Because he has, what what is it that he has? So he has autism. So probably severe autism, um, yeah. nonverbal, they call it. He can speak a little bit or yeah. he says words to me. I understand that you may not be able to understand. Yeah. But he's a great kid. I, mean, I always look at it as... He's 24. He's 24 years old. Mm -hmm. He's got to live with me or his mom his whole life. Uh, he's not really interested in having friends. He likes his brothers and sisters and me and his mom. But yeah. he's good with that kind of group and has his routine. And But he's such a he's such a sweet kid. And I always look at it as it could be worse in terms of, yeah, he's got autism. He's not going to get married or have a normal life or be a quote-unquote typical kid. But, I mean... What if, he, what if he's blind? What if he's paralyzed? What if, and there's right. things that could sure. be way worse. Sure. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm happy to have him. He has and his health. Has basically. his health. He's good. I like having him at the house. So my daughter's in New York City and my son's in Seattle and, yeah. and Jackson's here with me. And I, I love seeing him, you know, half the time. His mom has him half. I have him half. And I love the time I get to spend with him. And that's, a, that's amazing. But that's a turnaround because when this happened, that's tough news. For sure. For sure. And how much did they describe to you about what you were in for? Not much. So they people, didn't. no. So in autism back then, like 24 years ago, yeah. it wasn't really in the mainstream. Now yeah. they talk about the spectrum and autism. And, and there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. And so back then, it wasn't really diagnosed. You look back when we were kids, was, it, was there autism when we were kids? I don't know. They would. Well, yeah, they're, we just obviously called them other things. Right. They called them, in ours, they had, like, they, they called the MR room. And I'm not going to say what it stands for, but they had, <laughs> <laughs> but they had a room like in elementary school. No, I know where all the yeah. kids were there. Like, okay, they're all. I can the... say what ours was called: II individual instruction. Okay, but they had. And that... I joined the IIs one time. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. I didn't want to swim. I didn't want women to girls to see. I didn't have pubic hair, so I pretended yeah. I had problems, and they put me in the II section. Oh wow! You know what they did to us? That... Archery. Oh they really? Gave bows and arrows to the people with. Oh wow! That's, that seems safe. <laughs> I would have them shoot people. And right. I would, have, I would say, hey, shoot over there. But uh, so this is something where he couldn't go to school. And when you're getting this information, it's happening like month by month, and it gets worse and worse, quote, unquote, worse. Mm -hmm. Like well, the manifestations of this are, you're going, well, okay, now he's nonverbal. He's, right. He can't do certain things. Well, I don't think it gets worse. I think it. It's, oh, really? It, it, it didn't? No, it didn't get worse. It's, it's kind of stayed the same. It and did. so in terms of him, he got better. Like he what knows, age did was, did this happen? Around two. Two years old. Yep. And he was normal at one point. Not, For I, sure. I don't like the word normal. Right. But you know what he I mean. was typical at one point. And uh, you think maybe it was a vaccine injury? Yes. That's, yeah. that's what we think. I we're know not people... allowed to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying we're not allowed. I'm saying we in society can't sure. talk about it. And that pisses me off. Right. For sure. That's what... You can't have these discussions right. without people going out of their minds. If right. that's your experience... Right. He was okay before yep. that and then wasn't. So right. do the math and yep. also do the math on you and I did not grow up with that many people with autism. For do sure. Do the math. For sure. So he was okay. So there's got to be something. He had a vaccination. So let's do some exploration in this. Let's yeah. just gotta put our heads in denial and get angry at us for talking about it. Right. Right. It could be. 
For, Let's put it that right. way. In a theoretical sense, it could be that could be the case. Right. That, that's our experience. I'm not that's speaking your, for other exactly. people. Exactly. But I'm happened. sure you've talked to other people and it's their experience. I would say 99% of the people I've asked, it's their experience. Right. Right. Okay. And then not okay. Correct. After that. After one incident. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's a little math to be had there and a little science. People say trust science. Well, you trust that. That's a that's a that's a theory you might want to have. And I just think it's sad. I think it's very sad that we can't discuss it. Don't right. you? I mean For sure. For and sure. you've had that be it's you have to be hush hush and right. find out if somebody is okay about talking about it. Right. right. Cause some people say, No, the doctor the research says I'm like well, I don't care about the research. All I know is my experience. This is what happened. That's exactly this right. This is how I view yeah. it. Right. You can view it differently. That's fine for you. This I is how, saw. This a movie, I, I saw a movie called Vax. Did you ever see? No, it? I want to see that. I heard it was. Well, really they good. ripped it off the market, and you know why? Because the people with all the money don't want you to see this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they have all the money and all yep. the power. I'm yep. gonna probably shut this down. <laughs> I'm gonna get shadow banned. <laughs> And whoever is listening, if you are about to shadow ban me, I'm just saying, look, this is the observation. This is the experience. You can't deny. I talk about this, believe it or not, in comedy right. when I'm teaching. When I'm teaching comedy, I say, share your experience. No one can deny it. Right. No one can deny your experience. They can't get angry at your experience. Right. They can ex- your opinion, they can. But they can't deny what's happened. And you can't deny that that's your observation of what happened. But the movie is extraordinary mm-hmm. because it actually shows – siblings like you have two siblings yep. you know in different reactions to different things and and i just don't understand in society how we don't have the guts to explore these things that are just not it's not to me it's not normal to not to do that to deny right, right. same thing we we're talking about earlier about you know these celebrities that have all these allegations against them People go into denial. They don't want to believe something. For sure. And I think that we talked about it. That people think they know the celebrity. So yeah. if you see them on yeah. your favorite TV show or you like their music, you're like, I know, I like that person. That person's great. Then when you hear about them doing these illegal activities, like, not my friend or not not the person I know that can sing that great or can act and can jump that high. Like, yeah, them too. Them too. That's them exactly too. right. And we go into, and same with the government. Same with the government. Yep. I mean, I remember weapons of mass destruction. That, that was when that happened. Remember that? Weapons oh, yeah. Must have, and, yep. and he had 80% approval rating. Let's go get him. Whoever yep. did this, let's go get him. I'm thinking, get get him. They're all dead. They're, they're in the rubble. You know right. what I mean? And I just started examining that and going, oh, man, I think we're being snowed here. And then sure enough, we end up in a war right. that had nothing to do with 9-11. And yep. yet there was some sort of like... Uh, some sort of way with their propaganda, they're able to, you know, associate them with them. You know, For sure. The killers were from another country, which yep. we never invaded. Right. Weapons of mass destruction that didn't exist, and I knew that it didn't instinctually. Right. And it's the same thing with a lot of this stuff, these shenanigans that goes on, that go on, and they don't want you to talk about it. That's why I like having this. It's yep. an open forum. Podcasts are an open forum to do that. Yep. You've had a lot of great turnarounds in your life, and you know what? I got to tell you, this is a compliment. You're just a good guy. Well, thanks. You're a friend of mine for years, yeah. and you're just a good guy. And I can always rely on you just be, for being a good guy. Right. You know what I mean? And some well, people, I mean, I feel the same about you. That's why we're friends. I know. But, That's but, why we're friends. But, and it's for many, many years. And you, yeah. I could go years without seeing you. It doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. It's just a, I think there's something to be said about that. I should have that as a topic where you just have someone in your life that does it, isn't there every day, isn't there every week, isn't there every month. It's just... But you know that their energy is a positive energy. Right. And I would encourage people watching or listening, find those people and surround yourself with that energy. Because I don't know about you, but I have actually had the opposite happen with negative energy and like bad people yep. lying. Have you had that happen? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I stay away from them. I'll give but pe- how do you stay away from them? You don't know at first. I'm, you don't know at first, but yeah, you... I paint red flags green. I go, no, they couldn't be. No, 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 right, no, no. Right. I just had it happen the other day. Right. Well, I trust... I try to trust everyone at first. Like, at face value, right. yeah. you're telling the truth. If I find out you're lying or doing things that are sneaky or bad, then eventually I don't return your phone call. We don't hang eventually. out. Eventually. Eventually, yeah. You don't know at first. H- have you been burned, though? I just got burned again. A, a big financial burning with, with lying. Um, I think you get, that happen p- to you? People get burned all the time. I think, yeah, everyone's got burned by friends or acquaintances. But, yeah. you know, you, you shake it off and, and move on to something I have positive. A, I have a little one that's happening right now, and, and I, I get Philly. 
Right. I get a little <laughs> Philly. I get, I, I do. I get right. defensive and Philly. This is the little one. I have some big ones too that happened recently. But um, this this car guy, they they owe me thirty eight hundred dollars. That's not a a little bit. It's not a lot either. But thirty eight hundred dollars. And the guy goes, you know, how much is it? Oh, I don't have, I don't I don't have checks. You know, he's around the corner. And I swear to you, I'm getting incensed. <laughs> I'm getting incensed to the point I want to go Philly and bring a big right. guy in there and call him on my bodyguard and go, hey, I'm sure you have checks now, don't you? Right. I did that before, by the way. I went to this guy to rip me off. Uh -oh. I brought this big guard with me. <laughs> from my, I was in a, did it I, work? I was in a high rise. He tapped his gun. I'll never forget it. Oh, wow. And he goes, pop, tap, tap, tap. He goes, what are you going to do for my man? And this guy was dying. He was just dying. He couldn't believe that I had the balls to go into his office with this guy. He was a doorman in my building. I said, hey, Nick, why don't you come down with me? He goes, you got it, man. He's like one of those guys. You want him to put it by your side. But I have this I have this idea of doing this with this guy. But that's not the way to turn around things in life. This is about the turnaround, doing it in a, in a conscious way, in a spiritual way. But once in a while, eh, I have some yeah. slips and I no, go back you, to you that. You want to, but to me, like, it's mostly people wise that do do me dirty, so to speak. Yeah, I just pretend they don't exist anymore. Wow, you're you're pretty lucky. Like I that just way. like uh, you yeah. don't exist. But I'm do you just... let go of the money if they owe you money? You let it go. Uh, I don't like doing that. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so they can't. They have to exist right. if you're trying to get the money. For sure. Back. For sure. I, I'll give one last tip to everybody out there, which I'm about to do with this other case. The guy's about to rip me off. I'm just gonna go with a compromise. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because he has his opinions right. and I have mine. I'm just going to go with a compromise. And it's worked every single time because it's the freedom that you want. For sure. You do not want to be in resentment. Yep. You don't want to be thinking I'm going to bring in the heavies in there and yep. go, you know, tap a gun and go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't want to do that. Right. <clears throat> Tempted. And I might do some form of it. Go in and tell him jokes. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> that's what I encourage people to do is just come up with a compromise, let go, surrender, yep. surrender the results, let it go. And it's so freeing. And here's the one thing, a point I will make too, is God, source, light, whatever you want to call it, is so abundant, you'll be taken care of anyway. Get rid of the toxic person. For sure. Who runs away with $25,000. Right. I got another one for $25,000. Yep. That'll come back next week. I'll get a job for twenty five thousand yep. dollars. Yep, just how it works. And something bad will happen to them. That's you don't, exactly have, to, you don't right. have to worry about it. Karmically, yes, Karma's, it doesn't have to happen for me. Correct. Karma wise, something bad will happen, exactly. and you just kind of positive shift your focus. Yeah, to something that's good. They're building their own reputation. Yep. Hey man, thanks for coming in here. It's great. We just had microphones in front of us. We normally just right. Go this could have been lunch or coffee, <laughs> or anything. <laughs> golf, anything. anything. Let's go make some money together. Let's as do a matter it. of fact, I'm going to get ripped off on one end. You and I are going to go make for this sure. Daryl Henley story. There we go. Yeah. All right, man. Everybody, uh, make sure you like us and comment and spread the word. It's a, a podcast. It's for you. It's about your life turnaround. It's about positive thinking, law of attraction, whatever. That's what I, my strong intention is to share these experiences like Mike <laughs> did today, like I do. So maybe somebody listening is going to go, I got some help that today for that. You know, now I know how to forgive. Now I know how to let go. Now I surrender. Whatever these tools are, we're to pass them on to you. I hope you had a good time today. Mike Sherrard, our special guest. How do we find you on social media? Uh, Mike Sherrard, 88 at, um, Instagram. Mike, there you go. So go follow Mike and all of his exploits of life. <laughs> <laughs> Concussion free. All right. We'll see you next time.